Next, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of measured quantities. So when we are working with measured quantities, there are very specific rules on how we have to round the final answer. The basic rules go as follows. If we're dealing with addition and subtraction, it's based on the precision or the decimal depth. And the qualifying thing is that the answer should match the precision of the least precise measured quantity. And that's the key, is that the final answer can't be, can't be any more precise than the least precise measured quantity that we have. So if one measured quantity only goes as deep as one decimal place, but the other ones go as deep as two decimal places, then the final answer can only have one decimal place. So that's how we deal with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and um, sorry, addition and subtraction is the precision rule. Multiplication and division, and by extension, square, square root, sine, cosine, all that business, it's much easier. And it's based on accuracy, not precision. And if you recall, accuracy refers to the number of significant figures in a measured quantity. So when we're doing multiplication and division, and by extension, those other things that I mentioned, the answer should have the same accuracy as the least accurate measured quantity. So now we don't talk about how many decimals there are, we talk about how many significant figures there are. So if one measured quantity has five sig figs, then the next one has four sig figs, and then the last one has two sig figs, that's the deciding factor is the last one. The final answer cannot have any more significant figures than two, so you have to round it off. Um, and that is, and the reason for that has to do with the fact that our measured quantities, those last digits, are always guesses. And as you saw with earlier on in the video, whenever you make a guess, it is pretty, um, it's pretty unreliable, especially if the uh, markings are very, very fine. So our confidence level with our guess, guesses are pretty low, and as a result, our final answers have to reflect that uncertainty. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example. And again, we're looking in the precision rule here. So in our first example, we're going to be dealing with three measured quantities. We have 95 milliliters, 3.27 milliliters, and 2.10 milliliters. So step number one is we're going to indicate where the position of the guess is. So in this case, that would be our five, our seven, and our zero. And the reason why it's zero here is because again, that is the weird rule. So we're gonna do this. I'm going to highlight them over here as well. So there's 95, 2.72, and 2.10. So I already have the rounding line indicated on our question here. And the rounding line is the limit. Everything to the right of this has to go. Everything to the left, and the reason why is our five here. This is the least precise, which means that the answer has to match the same precision. So since this five is a guess, these numbers that we have here, we have no idea what those numbers are, no clue. We are so uncertain about five, we're even less certain. These numbers literally could be anything. So as a result, this seven plus zero plus we don't know, that's not really a seven. This two plus one, equals three, that's not really a three either because we don't know what these numbers are. They could be anything. That could be a nine, that could be a one, that could be a five, we have no idea. So this is just the best that we can do. So as a result, these numbers here, this part, the three seven, that's actually, that's, that's actually garbage, right? Because we're adding these things, we have no idea. So the best thing we can do is we are only allowed to have one unknown, uh, unreliable digit. So here's the thing when we add all these together, the five, the three, and the two, that actually isn't a zero because we don't really know if that five is actually a five. Because remember, when it's a guess, we're really unsure about that amount. So that might actually be closer to four or it could be closer to six. We don't really know. So since that was our, a guess, we're not too certain about the five. We're really certain about that three. We're really certain about that two. And that seven is sketch. We are absolutely, absolutely rock solid on this two, absolutely rock solid on this one, and the zero, eh, that's a guess. So this is a guess, this is a guess, so that seven is a joke. We don't know what that is. We're solid on this, and um, we're solid on this, but since this is unknown, that's also a joke. And we're not really sure about the five, 
but we're very sure about the three and we're very sure about the two. But regardless, this is our best approximation. So that means we, when we round this off, we have to get rid of everything to the right. So now we follow the rounding rules. Since that is a three, seven, right? Well, specifically, we just focus on the three. Since that is just a three, we know we're going to round down. So as a result, the final answer is going to be 100. But important, you have to have the tilde here. And the reason why we have to have the tilde is because that zero, this zero right here is actually significant. That zero represents where our guess is. So there you go. That's the significant figure. So don't forget your tilde. So the final answer is 100 milliliters and it matches the same precision as this value over here. Let's take a look at the next example. Now with the this next example, I did something on purpose here. So at first glimpse, it looks like this actually has the best precision because it has one decimal place where these don't have decimal places. But I pulled a sneaky on you. I made this one meters and these two are centimeters. So before we can do anything, we have to make sure that the, the units match. So that means that I'm going to make uh, everything into centimeters. It's only logical. So that way we only have to convert one thing. So to help us, I'm going to circle all the values that are the guesses. So in this case, the seven, that's our guess. The one is our guess in this one. And again, this one is poor quality because there's only one significant figure. And that is a guess. So when we convert these into centimeters, um, 137, there's our guess. The 210, oh, that one is our guess. And then the five, that's our guess. If you take a look over here, this number here has the worst precision. This one has the worst precision because the guess is in the tens column. So the guess for these ones are in the ones column. The guess for this is in the tens column. That means everything to the right of the tens column, column has to get rounded away. So when we do this, we just do the addition. So um, again, we're really not sure about that seven. That zero, we have no idea what this zero actually is because we're not even sure about that one. That zero could be just about anything. Well, likely below a uh, five, but still, we don't know. We don't know what that zero is. And we're unsure about that five. So um, when we add these together, so this is... This is a guess plus no idea plus a guess. Um, getting a value of 12, ah, eh, maybe, right? So that too, completely, completely unreliable. Then we carry the one, of course. Um, and then when we do the sum here, um, since that is a guess, that five isn't really a five. It, we think it might be close to five, but we're not really sure. So that becomes our new uncertain digit. So that, this becomes our guess. All right. So that means everything has to get rounded off. Now you have to be very, very careful. Read the number first, 352. It's 352. When you round this off, and this is a common mistake, common mistake, people are like, oh, well, I just can drop the two and it's just 35. No, wrong, bad humans. It's not 35. It's 350. You need to have your placeholder there. Don't forget your placeholder. All right. And that is where our guess is. All right, so the third example in the precision rule. Let's take a look at this one. We want to add the following time intervals. So we have 3.02 seconds. So this one looks precise to the um, hundredths of a second. Then we have 4.5 seconds. Okay, so this precision is pretty low. It's lower. It's uh, to the tenth. So, so far, this is, has the better of the two precisions. This is worse. And then when we look at this number here, it's like, oh, well, that precision looks really good. Comparatively speaking, um, it's, uh, sorry, matches this precision here because it's two decimal places, except I did this to you again. The units don't match. We cannot have a conversation about precision whatsoever until we get them into the same units. So what I am going to do is I'm going to convert these hours into seconds because it's the less work, right? It's all about less work, right? Okay, so to do that, I have to make a conversion. So first of all, um, I'm going to go from hours to minutes. I know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 minutes over one hour, I can cancel out the hours. Okay. But I don't want minutes. I want seconds. So I know that there's 60 seconds in a minute, and then now I can cancel out the minutes. And then finally, that gets me down to 180 seconds. All right. Easy enough, except one small problem. Here's the issue. When we look at the number here, this looks like it has two significant figures because the eight looks like the guess, smallest scale, 
placeholder. There's just one problem. This number only has one sig fig. So since this only has one sig fig, we have to round that to one significant figure. Those are the rules because we can't just magically add quality. So that means if I have to um, round this off over here, which is hilarious. So this 180 has to be rounded up to 200 seconds. And that's going to make this extremely low quality. So now when we set up the rounding line, that's the guess for this one, the guess for this one, and the two is now the least reliable digit. So the final result in this one is going to be abysmal because here's the thing. We have no idea what that is. No clue here. No clue. No clue. No clue. And this is, uh, this is meh. So everything here, all these numbers are, are kind of meaningless because none of these question marks are known. So as a result, when we do the addition, we get 207.52. We have to round at the hundreds column. So what that means is our best answer is just 200 seconds. So this shows you what happens when you have very, very poor quality instruments involved with other instruments with better quality. So to give you some sort of context of how these things might have been measured, well, this number here may have used a stopwatch. Here, maybe someone's analog wristwatch. And this number, I don't know, maybe a 15th century hourglass or something. So um, this one clearly, since it's such a poor quality instrument, the rest of the measurements are essentially um, made useless because of it. Um, the idea, the smallest, the, 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 a chain, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And that's the, that's the big picture here, the big idea. This value right here, this one right here, was our weakest link. So our final answer had to match the same quality as um, this um, poor measurement. And again, with respect to precision. So we've done three examples using precision. Now let's focus on accuracy. The accuracy rule, thankfully, is, is much easier to work with because um, simply you just have to match the number of sig figs. So when we look at this question here, uh, we're going to find the volume of a box, which is multiplication. So we have 2.1 uh, centimeters by 2.01 centimeters by 1.09 centimeters. So when we look, this has two significant figures, three significant figures, and this one is three significant figures. That means that the final answer is going to be limited to two sig figs. All right, so this is what we do. We simply put this in our calculator, and when we do the calculation, we put in all the, cal what I like to call calculator vomit, because these numbers, many of these numbers have no meaning. Um, they're just a result of the calculation. Your calculator has no idea about significant figures. It's just saying, well, if you multiply these numbers together, this is what I get. Now, notice, uh, this is very important too. Notice that it is centimeters cubed. And don't forget, when you're multiplying this, that this is centimeter times centimeter times centimeter, that makes it a centimeter. So yeah, centimeters cubed. Okay, so next, when we round off, we have to round off to two sig figs. Well, the f so only the first two. So that's the first significant figure, second, and then everything after that is gone. So the final answer is just going to be 4.6 centimeters cubed. And there you go.